Hi, I'm Pastor David at the Inner Lincoln Reformed Church. Thanks for stopping by our Facebook or YouTube page today and giving me the opportunity to share some hopeful thoughts with you from God's Word. In these troubling times, in these times of frustration, in these times of uncertainty and anxiety, I hope that you will find hope and, and faith that will guide you through these troublesome times in God's word. I think uncertainty is an accurate word of how we all are feeling. We don't know what the future looks like. We don't know when things will get back to normal. Uh, we don't know when we'll be able to safely open up uh, the country for business. I talk to a lot of people during the week and many people are very anxious to get things going again, to go back to life as normal, to open businesses and, and go shopping and go out to eat and do the things they enjoy doing. An equal amount of people are very fearful, very fearful about what may happen uh, if we open things back up. Afraid that the, the virus will come back uh, in spades, stronger than before. More people sick and more people dying and the hospitals being overwhelmed. But nobody knows for sure what will happen or what the actual correct steps are to take to open up the country. There's a lot of fear, anxiety, and worry because of the uncertainty, because we don't have the answers and we really don't know who does. I wanted to take a look at God's word today to ease some of our fears and uncertainty. You see, it's my belief that uh, by focusing on those things that are certain, it will help us get through the times of uncertainty. And one thing is certain and sure, and one thing is true. I've learned that God's word is true. I've learned that God's promises never fail. I've learned that we can trust and depend on him, and he will not let us down. Where others may fail us, God's promises always come true. Today I'd like you to join me in taking a look at Psalm 37, which is a psalm written by David. The book of Psalms consists of many chapters, different songs and different writings from many different authors, but David wrote a good number of them, and he wrote this one. He wrote this one as he was getting older and kind of looking back on his life and he's giving some advice to those of us who live in uncertain times. David, the first we hear of David uh, was when he was a young man, a little boy. He was the youngest in his family so it was his job to watch the sheep. And while watching the sheep, uh, he had to learn to trust God. As a small boy, he was able to kill a lion and a bear to protect the sheep. Later on, he uh, was able to defeat the Philistine giant Goliath with a single stone from his sling. This wasn't because of his own strength or skill or ability, but because of his trust in God. It was around that time that Samuel came and anointed him to be king, the future king of all Israel. Now many days passed between the day that Samuel anointed David as king and the day when he actually became king. He had plenty of time to doubt God's word. Plenty of days of uncertainty, wondering if this would ever happen. But at the end of the day, he did become king. He was one of Israel's greatest kings. And he was able to thank God 
Thank God because he realized it was God's doing and not his own. And so as he looks back over his life, he encourages us to follow his steps and to put our trust in God. In Psalm 37, he starts out, do not fret because of those who are evil or be envious of those who do wrong for like the grass, they will soon wither like green plants, they will soon die away. Fred is not a word that we often use in today's English language, but Fred is something we're often caught up doing. The best way for me to explain fret is to say that it's worry on steroids. It's worry taken up a notch or two when we all worry we all see the uncertainty. We all wonder about the future. We all wonder about the outcomes, how things are gonna be in the future. But then sometimes we go beyond worry. We be, go beyond worry and we begin to fret. We begin to be anxious and fearful all the time. We let that anxiousness turn into anger. We begin to look for someone to blame and to be bitter and to, to complain and to find fault. And that's when we have taken worry into fretting. And David said, do not fret. Don't worry about tomorrow, as Jesus said, and don't fret, rather trust God. And so he continues, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. In other words, trust in the Lord and you will live in the land and you will be fed. You will have enough to eat if you trust in God. Trust is an interesting word too. And if we're going to trust in something, there's nothing better to trust in than the Lord, because he is certain, he is sure, he is true. His word never fails, his promises always come true. I'm sure you've noticed this before, and I don't know if you can see it now, but the words on this bill, on the back of this bill say, in God we trust. You can pull out a bill, a one, a five, a 10, a 20, a 100, and you'll find these words. Even on your coins, you'll find the words, in God we trust. It's so ironic to me that they would put the words, in God we trust, on our money because money is one of the things we tend to trust in. We all believe that we'd be better off if we had a little more money. Now, it makes sense that we depend on money we need money to buy food to eat. We need money to buy the things we need. And yet, it would be wrong for us to trust in money. Because money is here today and gone tomorrow. Money's here today and gone tomorrow. In fact, someone was telling me the other day that with all the extra money we're putting into the economy, we can expect higher taxes, more inflation, and that eventually money won't be worth very much. So don't put your trust in those uncertain things that are passing away. And there's many things we could trust, and most of them are uncertain. We could trust in government. We could trust in the experts. We could trust in ourselves or in our own wisdom. But God's word tells us that even the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of men. So why would we trust in money or silver or gold or in government? If you wanna trust in government, you haven't been paying much attention lately. There's only one who's worthy of our praise, who's worthy of our lives, who is worthy of our trust, and that 
is the Lord. So David said, trust in the Lord and do good. He continues, take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now we all have desires in our heart. We all have things that would make us happy. We all have things that would bring us joy. Maybe it's a, a favorite meal. Maybe it's being with your friends and family. Maybe it's a walk on a beach. Whatever it is that brings you joy, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that, but if you learn to make the Lord your joy, if you come to realize that the joy of the Lord is your strength, if you come to depend on him and trust in him and look to him and allow him to be your joy, then the promise is this, he will give you the desires of your heart. David goes on to say, commit your way to the Lord, trust in him and he will do this. Commitment is a word that we have trouble with in our society and that's because many of our commitments uh, fail us or things have gone bad to us, uh, bad for us when we've made a commitment. Uh, I mean, the cable company or the phone company or the cell phone company comes to mind, commitments that we are hesitant to make. Some people struggle with commitments in their relationships. But what David is saying here is to commit your way to the Lord, your path to the Lord. Commit yourself to him. Look to him as your savior, as your Lord, as your God, as your king. Make a commitment to follow Jesus. Make a commitment to read and study and obey his word. Make a commitment. And this is what he will do. He will make your righteous reward like the dawn and your vindication like the noonday sun. The promises of God are for those who will trust in him, delight themselves in him, commit their way to him. And then David goes on to say one more thing we should do. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Patience isn't something that we enjoy doing. We don't like to wait. We want our answers now. But David's advice is be still before the Lord. When you're still before the Lord, when you quiet your heart, quiet your mind, turn off the radio, the TV, the internet, and just be quiet before him and talk quietly to him. You know about prayer. But did you know that prayer is a two-way conversation? And if we will talk to him, that's one part of prayer. But when we listen quietly to him, that's another part of prayer. And we'll receive the grace and the strength and the help we need when we hear his still, small voice. These are all promises of uh, David, advice that he gives us, trust in the Lord, delight in the Lord, commit your way to the Lord, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. And he says, do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes, refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret, it only leads to evil and those who are evil will be destroyed but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. A little while, the wicked will be no more, and though you look for them, they will not be found. In other words, don't fret. Don't worry, because the rich will continue to get richer. Well, unfortunately, the poor will continue to get poor. Those who lie and cheat and steal will continue to lie and cheat and steal. Those who are faithful and true to God will continue to be faithful and true, to trust in him, delight in him, commit themselves to him, and to be still before him. And at the end of the day, 
the wicked will be no more, and the righteous will shine like the noonday sun. Uh, David uh, says one more thing that I'd like to end with, says the Lord. It's in verse 23 of 37. The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. He said, I was young and now I'm old, yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. He's seen a lot. He's seen the wicked grow strong and powerful, but he's also seen them fall away. He's seen the righteous go through difficult times, but he said they have never been forsaken by God and are never begging for bread. A man whose music I used to play on the radio, Dallas Holm, wrote a song based on this verse. He says, oh, I know you may get weary and the times they may get rough. You may not have all you want, but you'll always have enough. And when your darkest hour comes, just remember what I say. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. Oh, I know it seems so hopeless. I know you don't even know what to pray. You've done all you know to do. And it seems there's just no way. And when you feel you're at the end, just remember what I say. I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. I've never seen God's people with a need he could not meet. I know that he cares for his own and his promises he will keep. So just hold on a little longer. The answer is soon to come. The endless waiting's almost over. The victory's almost won. And when again you feel his joy, you'll remember what I said. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. This is a promise for you, a promise for those who trust in the Lord, delight in the Lord, commit their way to the Lord and be still before the Lord. Let me pray for you this morning. Father, I thank you for your promises. I thank you for your word, which is true, which is sure and which is certain. And help us, Lord, to believe in you, depend on your promises, to commit our way to you, to trust in you, to delight in you, and to be still before you. Forgive us for those times when we trusted other things and other people and help us to return to a place of faith and trust in you and you alone. Lord, I pray for those who are watching today or who are listening, that they might know your peace, that they might experience your grace, that as they commit their way to Jesus, that he will lead them and guide them and be with each one of them. Be with us during this time. We know your word is true. We know your promises never fail. And we know that what you have said, you are able and willing to do. And so we look to you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for taking a few minutes of your time to be with me today. I trust that God's grace and strength will be with you. If I can help you in any way, don't be afraid to contact me here at the church, and we believe. We're willing to pray with you and believe that God will see us through this time. Thank you so much. And now, may the love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the presence and power of his Holy Spirit be with you today and every day. Amen and amen. Mm -hmm.